uh, I guess there are two <laughs> things that struck me with um, the Sunny Days, um, um, with the Sunny Day Al A Days album was the you got to work with Full Force, um, who yeah, also produced the again, original. Yeah, yeah. What was that <laughs> like then when you actually met them? Did is that when they said about how proud they were with the oh no, but you said you heard in an interview, but what what was it like working with this with them? Um, what. Well, with Full Force, by the time we did All Cried Out, I believe it was Paul Anthony and Bo Legalou, they came to mm. the All Cried Out video shoot. And from yeah. there, we've always been family. Like, inseparable. We yeah. must say, out of all the people that we said jump ship, they did not. Like, they Full never did. did not jump. Shout out to all six of them. Yes. Like, we love yeah. them. Like, yeah. they we really, love you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they really to this day. By us through yeah. all of it, like, through mm -hmm. everything. They never were like, oh, just, never. Okay. Like yeah. their family, like those, uh, that's our family. Like, yeah, yeah. thick as thieves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I've, yeah I've, I've had a long chat with Bo Lady Lou. Um, but oh, then, Lord. <laughs> Lord, right? <laughs> no, my my, he's uh, a my, menace. He's a menace. Yeah, we, love him. we call him Lucifer, but we love him. Lucifer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but he also worked with, uh, at this time, All Star was pretty hard with his stuff with SWV. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, did, so you went and work with Tone and Poke. What was it like with other producers taking over? Did it, did you notice a difference? Was it um, not as cohesive as an album? Or what was your thoughts of Sunny Days? We love Sunny Days because that was yeah. when we really got to dabble even more into writing. Right. And people like Renee from Jeanne and yes. Jean, we work with them separately. And they gave us up, like Renee actually sat with us to help us, like, write, like, to say, like, this is how you go about it. Like, it's like she was mm -hmm. a part of it. Like, she wasn't just about, oh, I just want my check and I'm going to write a song and that's it. She really yeah. was trying to, like, she was help hands us. On. Mm -hmm. You know, she was very hands on, sweet. Like I said, Jean, same thing. Like, she had her two songs that she did write, but she was helped, like, with our voices. She knew what voice she wanted to hear and, you know, helping mm -hmm. us just be, because it was different for us because now it's like, now we have to try to, kind of make certain decisions too. Like we're learning right. ourselves even more, you know? So that for us, I believe was a a, a teaching moment, you know, doing mm -hmm. that album. And we did get a great, you know, enjoy yourself, even though people don't know that it's us, but when they hear it, they're right. like, oh, that's my song. That's my song. That's my song. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, y'all. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you worked yeah. with, um, okay. I mean, was that KG from Naughty? Yes. And Kobe. Yes. yes. And, and Kobe. Kobe. Yeah. And okay. The girl from Coffee Brown, we always, and we are so sorry. Oh my v? God. V, so so sorry. Yes, the, V. Yes, V. Yes, she wrote. Yes. Yes, she wrote. Oh. Yep. If I yeah. know, okay. I yeah. spoke, okay. Yeah. I spoke with mm -hmm. V just uh, a couple of months ago. So if I'd known, I would have asked her about that. Okay. Oh, and shout out yeah. Little Mo. Little Mo wrote a song. On yes, there. Little Mo like, wrote We got a lot so. of people that yeah. were still willing to say, yeah, we want to work with them. They're dope. Yeah. We want to work with them. You know, so it was a yeah. great feeling. We just wish that it could have gotten the push that it should have gotten but it's yeah, okay but because we, we put it now <laughs> business business wise um mca were they folded around this time because they they folded them um, uptown and um and they all everyone went either to universal or or or, or geffen like mary mary and, and stuff mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. the album comes out do, do they are they saying yeah we're excited about this we're going to give it a big push or do they all just say it's disappear what happens this is to be behind the scenes <laughs> there was a lot going on behind the scenes um yeah it was like there was really no one we could talk to about it like who do you reach out to like to say what's going on there was really no person like you know like you yeah. said jeff red was the a and r but there was no person like we didn't have anybody that we could really talk to about it and then internally we're going through things, you know. Yeah. You know, so it was like a, you know, a lot of stuff going on at that time. Mm -hmm. so, but Jeff is your A and R. You he signed. He's, he's signing on the label. Um, yeah. Does he not then think? Okay, <laughs> here's the first single. You know, here's you know. We're, we're yeah, he actually this. he actually picked "Enjoy Yourself." Thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. He picked that song. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And this time you still weren't aware of. Remember, did you know about recoupables and the videos and making sure that you oh, don't yeah, get yeah, hype yeah. Williams? We, we yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We were hip to that. Yeah, hype Williams showing up and then there's a big catering truck. It's like, okay. Right, yeah, you yeah, like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, by then, we were very aware by then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But then, 
So as if I'm a therapist, and actually this is what that's my nine to five. So I, I oh, do nice. Oh, we might have to talk to you after that. Have to interview. talk to you about that. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. But so that's how it's, I'm, I'm. I'm always curious. So what does this do for the four of you when you've been, you know, the people you expected to trust sort of drop you, and then now all of a sudden, you know, you're in this situation at MCA. How do the four of you manage as as a collective, as a group? in the midst of all this? Barely. <laughs> <laughs> Barely. Uh, I mean, it was a rough time. Like, I, I mean, I mean, there's no other way to say it. It was a really rough time. We went through just times that we didn't know how we were going to make it through the day. Like, yeah. But again, thank God we had each other because we were able to kind of pull each other up because sometimes one would, that day would be a little worse than the other one. And, you know, and we're like pushing each other to now we got, we, come on, let's go. So we had each other. I mean, I feel like if we didn't have each other, I don't know where any of us would be if we didn't, because it was a lot. It was a lot yeah. to go through. You know? <clears throat> I, th I think during that time, we, we really, um, as women, we experienced like true heartbreak. Mm -hmm. That's how, that's how, that's kind of how I, I've, you know, put it together to to understand it more for myself. Um, you know, we go through relationships and we go through marriages and divorces and, and the pain that goes with that. But there was something very unique about the pain that we felt, you know, just mm -hmm. having to deal with all these, all, all of these realizations and not know where to go with it and not know how to salvage mm -hmm. it. Um, it was painful. It was sad. It was scary. You know, like we we talk about it all the time. You know, we we all fell into like this depression where we had to literally dig ourselves and each other out of holes. And I think I was the last one. Like we we were all going through this big thing, and I was the last one that Aaliyah called me one day and was like, "Sissy, that's it. We got to get up. We got to get up." It was that bad where we just didn't want to do anything. We didn't want to sing. Mm -hmm. We didn't care if anybody called us for a show. So when you can hit rock bottom that much, and I'm not saying rock bottom financially. I'm not saying rock bottom because we weren't. You know. Touring, there's something about how the heart breaks when you can't do what you love. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you can't even explain why, because it's not because we don't have right. it. It's not because we're not talented, but because when once that machine breaks down, you know, and, and even with relationships, when something feels one-sided and you can't even speak to your partner or you can't even look to the side and say, okay, hey, how are we going to fix this? Because that person no longer cares. That's how it felt. It felt like mm -hmm. no one cared about how we felt. So now it's okay. Here we go again stitching ourselves back up and getting back out there, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not really knowing, not really knowing what it was at, at that point, we just said, yeah. look, we're going to have to just take accountability for the fact that we, you know, we didn't care about looking the right into the decisions. things. We, yeah. yeah. We didn't make right. the right decisions. And this is why we, you know, we're probably here because now we were just kind of like oblivious to shit, you know, like, yeah. sorry, it, you know, oblivious it, it, to it, things and how it was moving. Yeah. It's funny because we so. always like, you know, when we do interviews and, you know, because this, this is the new thing of being, you know, technology and online and everything and people commenting and stuff. And when people say things like, oh, they're bitter and they're this and they're this. Yeah. And what did y'all do? And it's like, we own that <laughs> we didn't do the right thing as far as what we should have been doing for ourselves. Like, we did not. So we take right. the blame for our part, but it doesn't take away from what was done to us. So when we're being interviewed and we're asked questions and then people from wherever start typing and saying stupidness and, you know, you weren't there, first of all. And it's mm -hmm. like, you're, people are asking us to tell our story, asking us to say what happened. But it's like, when you do, you get- They rewrite it, yeah. As bitter, mm -hmm. or they try to rewrite it, or they try to say like, it was your fault. And it, not knowing everything that was taking place and how we really had to deal with it. Because again, we didn't really talk about it. Like we didn't have right. these platforms like it is now to talk about it, like to say, well, this is what went down and this is what, as it was happening. Mm -hmm. You know, it's years later now that we're bringing it up and we still get people, you know, just saying stupidity because yeah. we're explaining what happened to us. This is our story. And I'm not one of those people that says, I'm telling my truth. No, it's the truth. Like there's no, it's there's the no, truth, right. your truth. It's the truth. And that's Absolutely. It. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of Halftime Chat. Please remember to subscribe, share, and comment. But most importantly, why don't you become a member of Halftime Chat? We've got amazing videos, amazing perks, and um, being able to support the channel. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. I, 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 I begin to... I, 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 I
I, 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 I begin to 